Hello, it's um, Thursday the 25th of June. Uh, I'm Rob Watson, and this is a Decentered Media vlog. Um, and I thought I'd just uh, update uh, or continue from the blog that I posted recently about my thoughts about uh, looking at community media um, from a research point of view um, and from a conceptual point of view. Uh, I wrote a blog this week where I tried to lay out and define some, not very well, um, kind of emerging themes and ideas about how we can um, explore community media from a, a multi-dimensional point of view. So one of the things uh, that informs my thinking is that I'm, I come from a pragmatic tradition and that means uh, following in the footsteps of people like John Dewey and Richard Rorty, uh, William James. And it means looking at the world as it is, um, empirically, uh, but not seeking any kind of metaphysical or external um, solution or idea that will explain away the world. We have to look at it in terms of its uh, practical reality. Um, so from that starting point, we then get into, or I got into when I was uh, undertaking my uh, research work for my PhD, uh, using ethnography uh, as a model of engaging with uh, people. And I was drawn to symbolic interactionism, uh, which is defined by Herbert Bloomer as uh, the meaningful construction of the world, is that we make progress in the world, we figure out who we are in the world, our sense of identity, our sense of belonging, our sense of engagement, our sense of future plans and actions, because it's symbolically coherent. And what we need to be able to do is to put that into a structure uh, and some patterns of behavior. So there are things like, for example, uh, you know, in, in times of uh, war and destruction, one of the things that is displaced is our families, but one of the first things that returns and people have a strong pull towards uh, re-embedding in their lives is a family structure. Um, so we have these archetypal patterns of behaviour uh, which are prevalent. Our relationships are defined in particular ways. You know, there's variations between cultures uh, and there's variations at different times and there's variations in terms of the context of things like the type of technology that we have. But there are some deep-rooted patterns of behaviour and differentiation uh, which we need to take seriously and look at because de they define us and we are defined by them. So this drew me into thinking about uh, the work of Carl Jung, which I'm uh, kind of catching up on uh, in the last couple of years, is really to think about what these archetypal patterns might be. And I want to talk about this in more detail, uh, maybe in a, in a further piece of writing. But it just struck me that the... Um, the way that we often look at our media and we think about our media is very transactional. Um, it's very much a case of looking at it as part of a systems approach, um, as part of a, um, a you know, kind of like a, 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 if you imagine a circuit board where you have inputs and outputs, where you can measure things and you can um, calculate things. So we, we often use a cause and effect type of model uh, to understand what's happening and how people are using media and in what way different types of media shape and interact and, and uh, are legitimated or are dis uh, uh, dismissed um, because it fits into a nice tidy framework um, and the analogy that is a useful one to think about is the map is that we can draw out a map of uh, our world and we can provide signs and symbols on that map which illustrate what we think is there within the topography, within the, 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 this imagined landscape uh, or representation of the landscape that we construct. And a lot of the time academics can spend their time um, arguing about the description and the definitions and the signs that they use to populate the map with meaningful information. Uh, but it be can become quite obscure and it can become quite limited and narrow. Uh, for example, I'm not a fan of the term hyperlocal. Um, it's used a lot in journalism studies and there's a lot of debate and discussion, um, but nobody outside of the field of 
academic journalism studies ever seems to use that phrase. Uh, it's uh, a limited technical uh, phrase. We live in neighbourhoods, we live in families, uh, we maybe establish networks, um, but we don't live in a hyper-local world. So why should academic study start from that point of view? Surely academic study should look at and map out what it is that people actually do, not it, what it is that we want the map to say that they do. Uh, if that makes sense, so it's it's a question it's a question and process of and I, I Herbert Bloom is really interesting because he says you know we can spend a lot of time looking at the categories and analysing the categories um, and defining them and sifting them and sorting them, but in the process we miss what's going on in the world. Uh, and I used to have a sign on my uh, office door saying uh, a quote from Robert Proust saying something interesting is happening in the field be there and often we can get stuck with just merely looking at the models and looking at the theories and looking at the textbooks um, I also read recently uh, Carl Jung uh, I think it's quoted in Man and His, and His Symbols he says you can't be a, a, a an analytical psychologist uh, from textbooks you have to interact with people you have to get out there and talk to people and learn from people and I think that's kind of starting to feel confident about that process uh, to define that as a as a valuable form of research practice and methodology to actually get out there and and talk with people and be with people and learn from them uh, so which is why I'm drawn to a kind of a community development approach um, and I interviewed Cormac Russell uh, recently on one of the podcasts and uh, he's an advocate of the asset-based community development approach, the ABCD approach. Um, so the question is, where do we take this? What would be next? And I'm starting to think about how, you know, we maybe can think about community media in terms of its archetypal patterns and those kind of recurring figures that keep coming back, the entertainer, the trickster, uh, the wise sage, the mother figure, uh, which ones are given prominence in the hierarchy of uh, archetypal personality styles, types, uh, that populate uh, community media uh, groups up and down the country and maybe across the world. Uh, and then maybe beyond that is, is what are the symbols? What are the, what's the symbolic importance of community media? And that's really where I think we can start to think about how we can reframe our understanding of what community media uh, facilitates, uh, what it means to people and, and what they're driven by in terms of uh, trying to understand what motivates, or for me, to understand what motivates people. Uh, so it, it's about understanding the map uh, and producing a map, but maybe redrawing it and using different types of symbols, different types of signs, uh, different types of measurement indicators uh, that give us, because if you change the map, you change the picture of the world that you have. Um, and I think we should go through a process of changing and reevaluating the kind of maps that we've got that explain uh, and legitimise the present media setup that we have. Uh, maybe rediscover some old maps and uh, maybe invent and create some new ones. Anyway, uh, if you want to find out more information, it's up on the blog, which is decentered.co.uk. If you want to uh, contact me, get in touch with me via Twitter or Instagram at Decentered Media. Um, and if you want to leave a donation so I can get some coffee, tea, biscuits, uh, then, sorry, a massive pigeon just flying, flying overhead then, uh, maybe uh, just go over to Patreon and leave a, a small donation because that would be appreciated but until next time thank you very much